Welcome back to the chain rule part two. The goal of this video will be to use the product and quotient rule with the chain rule to differentiate. So let's take a look at this problem. First thing we should recognize here is we, we cannot find this derivative in this form. We're going to have to rewrite this as 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this problem actually has a lot going on. We have a product of two function and the second function is a composite function. So we need to apply the product rule first. Remember the product rule says you take the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now what makes this problem more challenging is that when we go find the derivative of this piece here, we have to apply the chain rule. So here we have our inner function u is equal to 4x plus 1. This is essentially u to the 1 half. So we would have x to the fourth times dy du, which would be 1 half u to the 1 half minus 1 negative 1 half, times the derivative of u, which would be 4. Again, here's our dy du, here's our du dx, plus 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power times the derivative of x to the fourth, 4x to the third. Okay, so what we have to do now is clean this up. We cannot leave this in terms of u. Remember our u is equal to 4x plus 1. So let's replace our u with 4x plus 1 and then clean it up. Okay, I'm trying to be as neat as possible here. What I've done in this next step is I've replaced the u with the 4x plus 1. The rest is algebra. We need to multiply as much of this together as we can. Let's see how we can do this. Here we have x to the fourth times one half times four. That would be two x to the fourth. Since this has a negative exponent, I'll move this to the denominator. So I'd have a 4x plus 1 to the positive 1 half power in the denominator. Plus, not much simplifies here. We'd have 4x cubed times 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power over 1. This is a nice answer for the derivative, but most textbooks like us to combine these two fractions. And the way we could do that is get a common denominator. So I could multiply this fraction by 4x plus 1 to the 1 half power on the top and the bottom. If we do that, it works out fairly nice. We can see we're going to have a common denominator. When we multiply these together, 4x plus 1 is going to have a power of 1. So we'll have plus 4x cubed times 4x plus 1 to the first power. So now we can distribute and combine our like terms. So our final simplified derivative here we're going to have 16x to the fourth plus 2x to the fourth, that would be 18x to the fourth, plus 4x cubed over our common denominator. Quite a bit of algebra for one problem. But we did it, we found our derivative. Let's try another. Here we have a quotient raised to the fifth power. Here we have an inner function and an outer function. We're, go we're going to have to apply the chain rule Remember our inner function will be u, so let's go ahead and write this out. Our u will equal this quotient, which would make f of u equal to, which would make f of u equal to u to the fifth. So our derivative f prime of x is going to equal df du. Now I'm using f instead of y, but it's the same thing. The derivative of this with respect to u would be five u to the fourth times du dx. We need to find the derivative of u with respect to x. But unfortunately, u is a quotient, so we're going to have to apply the quotient rule. But unfortunately, u is a quotient, so we are going to have to apply the quotient rule to evaluate this derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll also replace u with this quotient here. Now we'll apply the quotient rule to this. Do you remember the quotient rule? Remember the denominator is a denominator squared. So remember it's low d high minus high d low. So the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which in this case would be two, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is five. So we still have a lot to clean up. We need to simplify this numerator and then see if we can multiply it by this fraction here. So let's distribute the two. We're gonna have 10x minus two. Here we're going to have uh, five times two x, that'd be 10 x, but you're subtracting it, so minus 10 x. And then lastly, we have a positive 15, but we're subtracting, so it's minus 15. And this is being multiplied by this other fraction. 
So we need to simplify this one more time and then hopefully we can find our final derivative. We do have a 10x here, minus 10x, so that simplifies out. Looks like our numerator is going to be negative 17. Let's multiply these factors together and see what we get. First thing I notice is here we have four factors of 5x minus 1, and over here we have 2. So our denominator would be 5x minus 1 to the sixth power. Our numerator is going to be 5 times negative 17. That's going to give us negative 85. And then we have four factors of 2x plus 3. Well, that sure was fun. Let's do one more. Okay, let's see if we can find the equation of a tangent line to the graph of the given function. Here's our function and here's our point. Again, if we want to find the equation of a tangent line, we have to find the slope of that line by first finding the derivative of this function and then evaluating it at x equals 1. We may think we have to use the quotient rule, but in fact we don't. We can, but we don't have to. We can move this up to the numerator, so this function would be 8 times x squared plus 1 to the power of negative 1. Again, you have to get good at recognizing this is the composite function. Our inner function is going to be x squared plus 1. That's our u. So essentially what we've done, we've identified our u as x squared plus 1, which would make our y 8 u to the power of negative 1. Therefore, our derivative, or y prime, would be equal to dy du. So this would be negative 8 u to the negative 2 power times du dx, which would give us 2x. Simplifying and replacing u with x squared plus 1, our numerator would be negative 8 times 2x, or negative 16x. And then I'd move this back down to the denominator, x squared plus 1 to the power of positive 2. So to find the slope, we need to evaluate the derivative at x equals 1. Looks like we're going to have negative 16 divided by 2 squared or 4. So our slope of our tangent line will be negative 4. So now we have a point and we have the slope. We should be able to find the equation of that line. Let's go ahead and finish up and do that. Remember our point was 1, 4 and we found our slope to be negative 4. Let's use point slope form and find the equation of the tangent line. Adding 4 on both sides, we would have y is equal to negative 4x plus 8. This would be the equation of our tangent line. Let's verify with a graph. The blue graph is our function. The red line is our tangent line. Notice we have a y-intercept of positive 8, slope of negative 4, just as we found. Our point of tangency is the point 1, 4. We did it correctly. As you can see, when you're using the chain rule and find derivatives, there's a lot of algebra involved. So you have to be extremely careful and try to have some fun with it. I know it can be a bit challenging at first, but if you stick with it, I know you can do it. Thank you for watching.